Okay, so this Abraha, he's, he built a magnificent church in Yemen with his with full intention. You're going to see the video in a while. Right, with full intention to divert the people from Mecca to his church. And his intention is to get money right, coming into his, into his country. That was his intention. And he wants money to come into his country. So it was not anything sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was basically, it's all about money. Lah. You know, and, and here uh, we see that the story, whenever someone does something, because of money uh, they want money or they want popularity or they want station their position Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, can, can cause it to not happen for them right? so he built a medicine church uh, and began to uh, uh, call people to come to his church and not go to the Kaaba. Uh, he actually said that he actually said to the people like, don't go to the Kaaba come here I like, come to his to his to his church right but this is important right but the Kaaba so he's trying to complete the Kaaba right the Kaaba was built by who Nabi Ibrahim right the Kaaba was built by Nabi Ibrahim right and the Arabs were from, uh, or the Arabs, they honor, the Arabs honor Nabi. Okay, the Arabs, they honor Nabi Ibrahim. Right, so the Kaaba was built by Nabi Ibrahim, alayhi salam, and the Arabs, they honor Nabi Ibrahim. Right, so there are of the Arabs that are from Nabi Ibrahim's uh, uh, lineage, right? So from Nabi Ismail and down, right? But there are also those who are not from Nabi Ibrahim's lineage. There are those right, who are from other parts of the like old Arabs, from other parts of the of Arabia. But most of them, they are actually from Nabi Ibrahim's lineage. Majority of them are from Nabi Ibrahim's lineage, right? So here, the Kaaba was built by Nabi Ibrahim, and it, the Arabs count they consider Nabi Ibrahim to be their their ancestor, lah, And they will they will you know exalt Nabi Ibrahim, alaihi salam. Right, so when they heard that this king in Yemen, you know, in that in, in this year where Bayram was born, when they heard that uh, he had built a a, a, a you know a grand church to compete with the Kaaba, to convince people to come to his church, what happened was that <laughs> see what happened, eh? right, What happened was that a man from one of the Arab tribes, right? He heard about it. He got very upset. <laughs> because for them they love the Kaaba and they, 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 they exalt the Kaaba but to the point where they put their own idols around the Kaaba so that's the, that's the strange part right? they, they love the Kaaba so much and they know Nabi Ibrahim prayed to one God Nabi Ibrahim did not pray to idols right? but they still they invented these idols and then they put it around the Kaaba and every year everybody goes to the Kaaba and then they all like, they, have a, they have a during Hajj season right? they used to have a like a, a like you say, like a bazaar, you know, or a fair happening around around the Kaaba. That's where money will come in, lah. Everybody will come to the Kaaba, you know, to visit their to to do to, to do their Hajj and they have their own form of Hajj also, which is which is not the Hajj Nabi Ibrahim taught. Right? They actually change a lot of things. So they will tawaf without clothes. They will uh, slaughter the animals and throw the blood everywhere. Right? They will put their idols around and they worship the idols. They do all kinds of things, but they love the Kaaba. Like, and it's very it's very strange thing that they're doing, right? And and they and then they, they love Nabi Ibrahim also. Right? They, they exalt Nabi Ibrahim. But they're doing a lot of nonsense also around the Kaaba this the, 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 the before the time of Rasulullah. Sallam. So one of the men from one of the tribe of the of one of the Arab tribes, his name he's from uh, the tribe is called Kinana. It's a man from Kinana they called it. And it's a tribe is called Kinana. Not the man, eh? The tribe is called Kinana. Right, so he heard the man from the tribes is called Kinana. He heard what he heard about the church, right? right? And he went to the church. Sharifana went out. Okay, Humaira, I'm making you uh, co host. Hey, Husna, Husna. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So he went to the church. Right, so he went to the church, and guess what he did? What is the story? What did he do? 
he soiled the church. Soiled the church meaning with his uh, excretions. Now basically, he defecated there. And he went. He basically he went to the bathroom there. Right, and he put it all over the church. This 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 guy lah from from one of the tribes. This is before Islam. Eh? It's before Islam was uh, was born even. So he went to the church, you know, and he uh, he defecated. He defecated in the church. <laughs> so when he did this, when he did this, uh, Abraha. So when Abraha found out what he did, right? Abraha, of course, on the outward, Abraha should he was so angry that he's going to destroy the Kaaba. Uh, but actually, Abraha has been planning to destroy the Kaaba. So when he made his church, nobody came to his church, basically. When he made his big fancy church, no one came. Everybody still went to the Kaaba. Nobody wants to go to his to his church because they all they all love Nabi Ibrahim, and they love the Kaaba, right? So they they were not they were not at all uh, tempted, you know, by what Abraha did. So Abraha was planning already in the, in the first place to, to destroy the Kaaba anyway. Right? But when someone came you know, and, and did what he did in, in Abraha's church, so now Abraha has like an excuse as to why he has to march to Mecca and destroy the Kaaba. And now he's, he, he sees himself like, oh, I have an excuse to know why am I going to do this. I'm going to go to Mecca, destroy the Kaaba. So Abraha right, he, uh, finally found and uh, a reason to go and destroy the Kaaba right and this is uh, this, of course it's not a good enough reason like if somebody comes and, and, and uh, dirties your you know your, your place if a person wants to have revenge to the same revenge like, they have to destroy the entire thing right but he but Abraham from the very beginning he's been wanting to destroy the Kaaba right so what happened Right, he got elephants. He got uh, an army of elephants. Then army of elephants, right, and marched out to the Kaaba, to Mecca. Right, it's a huge army. At this point, at this point. Along the way to Mecca, many of the Arabs that were there, on you know in in the peninsula, they began to try and stop Abraha from going to Mecca to destroy the Kaaba. Some of them were warning him that the Kaaba does not belong to them. The Kaaba is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If he is going to destroy the Kaaba, he's actually competing. He's actually you know uh, he's, he's he's trying to destroy whose house? The Arab's house or Allah's, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the Kaaba, right? So they were warning him, right? But uh, this Abraha refused to, to pay attention and he was not, he, didn't, he couldn't care. And what people were saying, he kept on marching to the, uh, to, to Mecca. Right. I'm not going to, I'm going to show the, the, the clip first and then we will see if any questions and we see if we have time, we can answer. Alright, I'm going to open up the clip, the clip eh? Anyone has any questions? You can ask your questions now. Let's get the. Um, I'm gonna get the WhatsApp. Hey, WhatsApp, uh, YouTube. Okay. Anyone has any questions or not? Okay. Uh, Okay, no questions. Okay, Final Legacy episode 1. Any of you actually went to go and watch? Hmm? Okay, let me just share the screen, okay? Alright. 
you done this let me show you oh, okay here okay this is the story of abra this used to be how they used to they used to allow <laughs> they used to cover the kaaba in cloth It is Abraha. <laughs> I mean, it is the, 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 the image. Lah. Today is his. Right. So you see that uh, that he's gonna force people to come to his church. Right. This is the year where Barasam was born, and later on I'll speak about the um, the wisdom, uh, the wisdom in that in in this year being the year of the elephant, and what lessons you can learn from this uh, story of Abraha and the elephant, and that this is the year of Sam was born. So it's not something that is random. Don't think that. Or he happened, he happened to be born in the year of the elephant. You know, the year of the elephant or this, this incident of the elephant, it is a year, it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention in the Quran, in Surah Fiyin, right? And also, it is something to teach all of human beings right, about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protects and, and who, in, in because of what they do, right, they have uh, forfeited. Uh, their position, you know, uh, like for example, the you see the people here in the time of Rasulullah, so when he was born, right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will protect the Kaaba, right? Is because they, they the Kaaba they protect the Kaaba, but when they began to fight the same people, the the, the Quraysh, they began to fight the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is when uh, it became clear that it's not because of them, but it's because of that. Means, that means they they don't deserve. Or you don't earn uh, uh, any position, right? but it's because of uh, that because they happen to be around the Kaaba, so they are protected. Right? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protects the Kaaba, so they were there. Right? But it's not because of something that is like like they are special people because they are born, you know, in in in, in that land. Right? But it was more of because they were um, they were doing something that is good, right? in that sense. Okay, later on, I will I will explain a bit more lah. When I have my white boy, I will explain more. Okay, then they continue. Okay, so this this person is an Arab, and he's av- advising uh, Abraha. I right, don't touch the Kaaba actually, because the Arabs they 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 love the Kaaba because Nabi Ibrahim made the Kaaba. Uh, but it's not a matter of Arab or not Arab, but it's a matter of uh, of Muslim uh, or believer or disbeliever, believer or disbeliever. That's why when they when they did all these idols around the Kaaba. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, uh, is not pleased, of course, of, of all the shirik they are doing around the Kaaba. So, and that's why we will see that at this year, the year of the elephant is the year of whereby the Prophet Sallam is born, and is a year of uh, a lot of great change around the Kaaba. See, at this point already, he has planned to break, to destroy the Kaaba. He already planned from before to destroy the Kaaba. Right? To force the, uh, the, the people to do their hajj at his own church. Well, this is the story that we finished this. 
very patient right <laughs> oh snap This is like a, a celebration for the marriage of the parents of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Like a hundred camel celebration, big celebration, um, because of who is going to be born uh, from this marriage uh, between Abdullah and Sena Abdullah and Amina. Uh, so because of the, the greatness of the baby, that the boy that will be born from the marriage of uh, Abdullah and Amina. Story continues here. We need to talk about all kinds of things. This is Abdul Muttalib, right? he's talking to them. One thing to say about Abdul Muttalib, because he's the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because he's acting lah. But you see the story but that is behind it, um, that Abdul Muttalib, all of the ancestors of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all of them are noble people, they're honorable people, and they don't even though the people around them might be doing things that is uh, not just against Islam but also terrible things. Like for example, uh, they would uh, they would bury their daughters their daughters alive, you know, uh, or they would have their idols around. They would uh, throw blood of their sacrifice around. Right? Even though the people are doing that, the ancestors of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like the father, the grandfather, right? They don't do that. Right? He's all of his, They don't do that. They don't. They don't do what the people are doing. Right? But they hold very strongly to Nabi Ibrahim's uh, teachings. And so here he's he's going to advise people right, to not do these kind of things.
He said, Lord meaning you are our leader. They, they all know that he is a leader of, of them. But he will advise them. So he, that all of the ancestors of Islam, of Islam, they were known for their generosity, they were known for their sedekah, and they were known for uh, always upholding what is right and uh, forbidding what is wrong, and they were honest, and all of them, all of them in the ancestry of Rasulullah wasallam. Is my internet okay? Let me just uh, wait for it to come back on. Eh? Is it okay? Is it okay? Is the internet okay? No? Yes? Okay, so what is happening here? You can hear me. You can hear me. Right. What is happening here is that he has you see, Abdul Mutalib. Why is he a leader? He's a leader not because he forced himself uh, to be a leader. And he's not a leader because of any form of voting, like people you know vote for him to be the leader. No. Like he's a leader because naturally he is a, he is a good person. And naturally he is a kind person and naturally he will encourage people to do goodness and kindness to other people, and he is, and he's a very, uh, he's very influential, right? In this way, when it comes to goodness, and you you okay? Can you, is my internet okay? All right, <laughs> all right. So, so you see that he's a net. It's called a natural leader. Uh, he's a natural leader. Right? So, being a natural leader, um, he, when he sees a problem in society, he will actually gather people, right? And he will uh, uh, advise them. But he will say he sees this going on and then he thinks that this is the best way around it. So here what he is seeing is that there is a culture. That is, and remember we saw that he was very, um, that what stopped him from, from slaughtering his son was his responsibility, right? social responsibility that he had. Right? That he, didn't, he didn't want to be the reason that people begin to kill their sons right? because they're following their leader. Right? So he, was, he knew that whatever he did, he would influence people. Right, so he got very, very, um, it made him stop. Right, and he thought about it and he, and he knew that if he were to do this, people would begin to do it. Because he knows how easily influenced his people are. Right, so he, he, it, was, it was his responsibility lah, that people looked up to him, they respected him, they honoured him, they, uh, they loved him. Right, so he became very um, particular right, as to what did he do in front of people. You know, and in fact, how he will conduct his life, uh, even 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 you know his own private life, his own personal life. Right, so here he saw, you see what he's talking about, right? So SP Sampai. Right, so he said that he saw that there are people. You see that English. Right, there's a custom, right? Uh, uh, that happened, right? That uh, that in their in their time, when when a family when a man has is not able to look after his family. You know, when he's not able to feed his family, 
right, uh, in that time lah, you know, uh, because of, of of how poor they are. But at the same time, they don't want to ask for help. And they don't want to ask for uh, food from other people, right? And this is something that that it's, 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 they had in that time. There was a custom right, of not of not asking. So what what he would do, he would rather do, is to go to the desert and bring his entire family there, right, with his children, with his children and 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 his family, and then he would uh, he would put up a tent. Uh, he'll put up a tent, right, and he'll pu- he'll put them in there, and then he will lock up with himself inside, with himself inside, right, and they will die there of hunger. It's right, something that is very sad that happened that time, and the reason why they were doing that, uh, it was because they they too they are too um, poor, but at the same but at the same time they have too much pride to ask other people for help. They don't want to ask for help, right? So to him. When he see these kind of things happening around him, uh, even though it's not his family or not his, pe- it's, it's, it's other people. Right? But being someone who is, you know, the way uh, someone who who is a natural leader, right? He would think and think and think how to help, how to stop it, you know, how to help these people. They will not ask, no matter what you tell them. You can ask, you can ask. They will not ask, right? So he says there is a way to to stop them, right, from doing this to themselves and to their families. This is what a natural leader does. Right? They see problems around them and they think, what is the best way? And what is the solution right, to this? And all of Rasulullah's uh, ancestors, they all, they all were like that. Right? They, 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 they made it their concern what other people were going through. You know, the difficulty that other people were going through. It was their own concern. Right? They, were, they were very um, selfless people. And they tried their best. Like, like you see that his, his own father, Hashim, he would travel all the way to Syria or all the way to Yemen to try and trade and get food to bring back, not for him and his family, but for the people in Mecca. And they would do, do, they would do all of this. You know, and then they would, they would open up food and they would give up for free right, to help the people. Which is why they're natural leaders. People, people love them naturally. Right, so here he says, and, he's, and he, here he needs the help of the rich people around. So his idea is that every rich family should should take a poor family like an adopted family like in a sense you know so to see whether they are suffering are they um, do they need money do they need food and like what is going on with them uh, so to actually take take into their own consideration right, or take their, their affairs into consideration so here he says right, He's noticed it. They're very, they're very sharp. Okay. The ones, the ones who uh, they're poor and they're sit, and, and they're poor and they're rich. Right. So what he means is that. The, the rich share their wealth with the poor. Yeah? Not a rich man in the Quraysh should remain without adding to his own family somebody who is poor. And that means you, like you adopt one of the poor. This is something they began years ago, this is hundreds of years ago, that they began doing this. That the poor is connected to the rich. So the rich look after the poor. So, so here, right, they're talking, they're, they're discussing. Lah. I mean, this, this used to be a, a place where they would come and discuss right, matters that they see in society. You know, um, and they would always ask Abdul Muttalib for his opinion, his ideas. You know, what does he think? What does he think? Right, and this is the same place that later on, when Rasulullah uh, has been raised to be a prophet, that they used to come and meet here in this place to discuss how to destroy the Prophet in the same place. 
they will come to the same place and they'll discuss the same place. And in the same place, they actually will get the idea to kill Rasulullah wasallam. In the same place where the leaders will come together and they will discuss. Right. So here he's talking about people, how, are they, how they come and, and, and they're poor and they have no, they're, they're homeless because they come to Mecca as uh, doing Hajj and then they stay and they've got no house. <laughs> and they come to Mecca doing, doing their business, then they go bankrupt, they can't go back. Right? And then they come to Mecca, they think that they have a family here but they have nobody here and they're alone. Right? So all these things happen to people and they're discussing it. I'm just going through with you all so you all understand what's going on here. But the story of Abraha is uh, coming up. So here, Abdul Muttalib, uh, Abdul Muttalib, he is advising them. Right? Is that they, they did nothing to deserve uh, to be the custodians of the Kaaba? Right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave this to them. Right? That they become those who look after the Kaaba, so it becomes a responsibility. Right? Don't just think that oh, you're so great because because you know uh, Allah gave this to you, right? but it's a responsibility. And right? the same thing if us, you know, as Muslims, you know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us. Uh, our Iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the prayer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us family right? uh, uh, and they are practicing you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us teachers right? all of these things is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? so it's not that you know any of us we deserve it we don't deserve it right? but it's a blessing it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you cannot see that it's a blessing, then uh, ask Allah to let us see that it's a blessing. So Allah will increase us, uh, give us more of His blessing. But if we take it for granted, then you don't know, you know that if there will come a day whereby if someone takes it for granted, it's possible that Allah take it away from them. And because they, don't, they, they, they abuse it, or they don't, they don't want to um, uh, abide by it, they don't want to give it its full rights, I don't know, you know. So, so here he's saying, you know, about the Kaaba is is a blessing, right? and they happen they happen to be around the Kaaba. It's a blessing for them. Okay, here you see. <laughs> Show the story here, okay. Okay, they're talking here, they're having a lot of discussion. Okay, here. Abraha is here. <laughs> this is where the stories I told you about about the man from Kinana, the man from the tribe Kinana. And he went to the uh, he went to the church, and he dirtied the church. They say he threw his nudges everywhere, basically. And the, the, the English they didn't they didn't say it. 
but he threw away he threw his nudges all over the place in the in the in the in the church. So you see, he's been waiting to he's been waiting for a, an excuse, a reason to destroy the Kaaba. And this came as a right reason for him to go and uh, destroy the Kaaba. <laughs> so the man is here, this Kinana. Okay, I'm going to stop here for today, like for the, the story. He's going to talk a lot, lah. they will talk a lot because they, they, they will explain how important the Kaaba is to the Arabs because Nabi Ibrahim uh, uh, built it. Right? So here, like, the, the full story, they have it. Right? So Abra is, is, they, they, they're trying to see what's, what Abraha is up to. Right? So, so they think that, that he's going to. Um, this, he actually scolds the, the... He scolds that guy. The guy who went to the, to the church and dirtied the church. So you talk to each other, and then. Then he's just talking about some cult, cult, custom and everything lah. So it's okay. Can, but basically, basically, it's what's going to happen. Right? That after, in this case, but, right? So after they, uh, after he scolds him right, for doing what he did, because they 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 upset with him lah for 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 the thing that the, the church, they very sure that uh, Abraham will now come and attack the Kaaba. Inshallah, next week we will go through this part. Inshallah. Right. Alhamdulillah. I'm going to stop share here. Uh, today, as I mentioned just now, we're going to go through some of the laws, some of the some of the uh, rulings of uh, some of the rulings in Islam, and uh, basically the rulings of menstruation. Start, start with there. Okay. Then, if any questions, we can uh, go through it specifically. And inshallah, we will stop at six thirty. Okay, so today short short class. I apologize for the short class. I had a meeting before this. So, okay. Um, and I want you all to ask your questions, right? So I think the chat box is open, right? Correct. The chat box is open. Nah. Okay. The chat box is open, so you can ask your questions. Okay, I I know that quite a number of you are coming into. Uh, into into being uh, some of you are already uh, you, you already have come into your menses and some of you are coming into it eh? and some of you have not come into it so be prepared for it Alhamdulillah okay, rulings rulings um, preparation preparation <laughs> well, preparation for 
uh, height on the height okay i know that you might have gone through it in school everything but then inshallah this today we just, we just uh, go through some of the rulings clarify some of the, some of the, the rulings and also some of the adab and right? some of the etiquette that is there so you have basically you have law right? what, what is the law around it then you have uh, uh, a character right? your akhlaq and when it comes to it what's your character right? uh, and then it comes to your um, also uh, responsibility on it okay a few things to talk about today inshallah at any point you have your questions you can just uh, ask me okay, so uh, the character has to do specifically right with the moods that comes with it to be very very uh, honest eh? <laughs> and very very uh, basically ask the questions lah. you know how how to handle like, all these mood swings and then and then you know it's not you but it is you that kind of thing and then what does islam say about it and our teachers you know mashallah they they give us a uh, very clear um, advice you know on how do you handle you know like if you know that you're you're you're, 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 you're you are not in a good mood right? and you know why right? you know why you're not in a good mood or even not even not even because of your menses maybe because of any other thing and you just happen not to be in a good mood and then you want to uh, and you know <laughs> right, not being in a good mood uh, it will cause you to hurt the people who are around you right? because of basically being grouchy yeah. <laughs> right? so if you're being grouchy then how do you handle that in a uh, uh, situation that's, that is around you right? uh, and then the responsibility that comes comes with uh, puberty with bulu so those of you who are already uh, already way past this uh, in fact, you know what? We, we are never way past this. <laughs> Even up to, uh, as soon as you're a teenager, it's still it, a lot of people, um, especially when it comes to the last part, response that comes to puberty. Right? I know you all go through all these kind, of kind of thoughts in school. So I'm going to try and uh, suit it in a way that uh, to answer your questions. Right? So wh whatever you are wondering, you can type on the chat and I will, I will try and respond to it, inshallah. Okay. So of course the law, Right, uh, is that this is something that uh, to be to be to be clear? Right, the law is that um, any so the first let me just put the first point. Okay. Any cut uh, any um, let's say color okay. discharge from the womb. Of a woman, a woman is basically somebody who is um, nine years old. I'm going to put a star there. Right, nine years old by the Islamic calendar. Yeah. Okay. Right. So nine years old. I put star. That means is is not exactly nine years old, right, but is almost nine years old. It means if you are two weeks short of your ninth birthday, if any point you see any of these things come out right, of your uh, of your privates, then you have come into your uh, menses. And then it's fifteen days. So I'm just gonna put it here. So for example, so nine years by the it's by the Islamic year. So I put about or almost 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 nine years old by the Islamic calendar. Right, so what does this mean? And this means that right, if somebody, right, if a girl is 8 years old, 11 months and uh, 2 weeks, okay. so specific, eh? 11 years old, eight, 8 years old, 11 months and 2 weeks. That means, which means 15 more days to her ninth birthday, right? Because two weeks, about 15 more days to her ninth birthday. Because it's two weeks and two weeks more, right? To her birthday. You understand? Okay, I go backwards, okay? Make it clearer. Right? So, um, make, it, make it easier for you all. If a girl has uh, less than 15 
this to her after 15 days or less has 15 days or less to her ninth birthday okay at any time okay so maybe 10 years old 11 years old and even after that but as long as it's almost nine years old okay almost nine years old this is important i know some of you already passed past nine years old right most of you are past nine years old right <laughs> and you see you past this but i'm going to put this here because in case you have cousins like who are nine uh, or even eight years old i to to to, to tell them Okay, so if they see any colored discharge from the womb I'm of a of a woman, colored meaning what? Colored, right? Doesn't have to be uh, red, red. It can be any color, right? As long as it's it's, it's a colored discharge. I'm not sure what colors is possible, eh? Right? Yellow, is is a color, right? Uh, you have uh, brownish, right? You have yeah yeah you have um. You will see uh, greyish, right? Right. Uh, you will see there's even green, right? Yeah, they will talk about this kind of colors. Some 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 women get it last time. And right? now, Allah alam, orange, red, uh, dark brown, right? black. Okay, it's all colors. Okay, so don't think that it has to be red, red. It can be any of these colors. Right? And it doesn't have to be blood, blood. But it's basically a discharge that is colored. Right? So, I think I spot this wrong. Okay. Alright? So, just be very careful of, of things that are colored coming out. Right? Of a person. Okay? This is... This is one of the signs of menses. Right? So, even if it's not the first time, but every month. And so some months you see, uh, because sometimes, sometimes even right now, I have questions from people who are in their 30s or their 40s, right? And they have been having menses their entire life, right? But then they will say that, oh, this, this time around, you know, I saw something, it began, it began like, like they say, uh, uh, like beige, like a beige color. Or they say it's light brown. Or they say it's, it's, it's not red, but it's, uh, and they will say some other color. And then they say, but it's not blood. It does not have to be blood, blood, but it's a discharge that comes out that is that has a color, right, uh, in it. So it's not white. You know, it's not colorless. Uh, the the yellow can be quite dark, quite dark yellow, uh, or even lighter yellow, right. So even um, that you will say uh, beige, right? Beige, just beige. Okay. Okay. All of these things. It's all counted. They're all counted. <laughs> But later on, we speak about conditions as to when they are counted. Okay, right. So this can be possibly the start of the menses, right? Especially for young girls, you should be feeling cramps. You should be feeling uh, uh, the flow later on. Right? All these things will come up uh, for you, right? inshallah. And so inshallah, I actually was trying to postpone this until I meet you all in person in class <laughs> right? and talk talk about it. Right? But I think I'm just gonna uh, talk now, right? So when I meet you all in person in class, inshallah. Uh, inshallah, we we'll resume our class in person. I mean, I will discuss with the mothers lah. See how 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 to do it. Because only now only five people can come, right? <laughs> so we we we'll, we'll see how it goes lah. You know, when it comes to to real classes, uh, I mean, in the face in front of each other classes. Okay, uh, and it lasts for more than twenty four hours, right? Last it means it it, it flows. The flow is more than 24 hours. So minimum 24 hours, right, from the time that you saw it. So all, you know, all together, 24 hours put together, right? Then this is, this is counted to be, right, this menses. Okay? Right, so you, most people, they will see, like, sometimes they, they will have, like, for young girls, you all should be seeing, okay, it's for young girls, eh? And you all should be seeing, uh, sometimes you have cramps and you have blood straight away. Right. But as you grow older and the womb gets older, the womb will begin to not behave that way. Right. And just keep this in mind. Right. That as soon as, as soon as you're stressed up in school, so if school you're stressed, there's exams happening, things can happen to you. Your menses is a sign of your health. It's 
So how healthy you are emotionally, how healthy you are mentally, how healthy you are physically, right? Your menses will show it. Right? So, uh, so sometimes people get they get stressed up, right? And then their menses uh, will go haywire. Right? So instead of instead of like blood coming out, right? They have like like they have like brown stains, dragging everything, and then uh, it can come a week early, it can come a week late. Then it can drag for how many days? This can all mean that there is stress in a person's life. Okay, so it can mean not that it will mean or it must mean, but it can mean right? that there is stress or maybe they are not well in some way, right? Or something is with the womb, right? It's happening with them in the womb, right? So, so all of these things are signs, right, for a person to take note. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop here today, right? I know, I know, I just began the clear the class, but what I want you all to do. Uh, is that through this following week, right? Um, to think, especially for those of you who have gone through menses, and those of you are who are already seventeen or eighteen years old, nineteen years old, already coming into your going out of your teenage years. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, right, to write it down. Uh, you can you can text me directly, or next week you can ask straight away. So when you ask straight away, I will be able to answer straight away from the beginning of the class, inshallah. Right. So it, uh, hopefully there will be useful so i'm going to dedicate you know uh, time right, to answer the questions when it comes to character or moods right because of 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 hormonal changes right basically if you want to ask about questions like like what do i recite what kind of zikr should i do right if i really feel very uh, you know uh, ang- agitated or i feel very uh, frustrated you know uh, or easily angered right, right or very grouchy with, with the people who are around me right, so what should i do Right uh, in these situations, uh, all these questions, uh, I want you all to think about and ask your questions next week. Right, because whenever every I, I, I ask you, are there any questions? <laughs> Nobody has any questions. So through the week, ask, think of your questions and write it down, so that when it comes for class, I can answer your questions. Um, and then the responsibility that comes with puberty, right? because in Islam you are considered to be an adult, right? And all that you do, uh, the angels begin to write down. You know, in the past, uh, in the past, there was you know, whenever any 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 child will come into puberty, uh, the father, that for example, if it's a boy, comes into puberty, the father will actually announce right, to the boy that that I used to hold my cane right, to to cane you and to, to to discipline you, but now they have come into puberty, the angels is on your shoulders, left and right, right? They have they now will hold their pens, and they will write down on your book. Right, all that you say and all that you do. So the father will say that, so today I have no need to put out, to hold out my kid anymore because the angels will, <laughs> will write down for you right, what you are doing. So he put out his cane and he will say that and now the angels will lift their pens and they write down on the, on the books what you do and what you don't do. And then the, uh, in, the la- in the past, people used to be so afraid you know, of uh, the pens of the angels when they write down what you say what you do, how you, how you treat your, your family members, your parents, how you treat your friends, how you treat your, you know, those who are around you, uh, anything that the people gossip, lie, cheat, whatever, the angels are all writing. So the boy, he will begin, he will cry. He will cry and he will say that I wish it was uh, my father's kin and not the, the angel's pens, right, writing whatever I do right, in my life. Because, you know, subhanAllah, uh, to, this is somebody who actually understands. And people who understand, people who have fear, they fear the day of judgment, you know, that the book will, will, will come up in front of them. And you know, in Surah Kafi, Allah says that they, when they get their book, they will, they will say, what, is, what book is this? Right? There's nothing that, that he left out. Everything is in this book. Every single word that I said is all there. It's all done. Right? So to the point that the people will, will take care of how they speak to other people. Right? So inshallah, uh, next week, I'll speak about the responsibility that comes and then how do we uh, handle ourselves right? uh, how do we handle our worship how do we handle our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay inshallah right, so come inshallah with your, let's, with your questions and we'll go through it okay anyone has any questions right now it's just 40 Okay, if there are no questions, right, we're going to stop there for today. I apologize, I, did, I think I announced on the Thursday group, I didn't announce on the Friday group, that today we start at 5 right, So I apologize. Uh, next week, inshallah, we will start at 5 o'clock. Inshallah.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam The internet is not okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Al-Fatiha anna Allah irzukna amana nafi'an Wa amana nakhwa wa salam Al-Fatiha anna Allah irzukna amana nafi'an Wa amana nakhwa wa salam Al-Fatiha anna Allah irzukna amana nafi'an Wa amana nakhwa wa salam Al-Fatiha anna Allah irzukna amana nafi'an Wa amana nakhwa wa salam Al-Fatiha anna Allah irzukna amana nafi'an Wa amana nakhwa wa salam Al-Fatiha anna Allah irzukna amana nafi'an وذا بالحقوق علينا وإلى حاضر النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتح بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته